In the towering Himalayas, between South Asia and China, Tibet has always been in the eyes of the world a legendary kingdom of peace and tranquility. In spite of its history of nonviolence, Tibet would not remain a peaceful land and would soon face great hardship. It was in this peaceful Tibet that an ordinary Tibetan was born who would become one of the most influential Tibetans of his time. His name is Paldin Gyatso. Paldin Gyatso was born in 1933 in the village of Panem. He became a novice monk at the age of 10 and began practicing Buddhism at the local monastery. His peaceful way of life, however, would soon change forever. In 1949, the Chinese began to expand their influence over the Tibetan plateau, oppressing the people of Tibet by erasing Tibetan culture and replacing it with communist ideals. Unaware of the danger the Chinese posed, the Tibetan monks focused on practicing Buddhism rather than resisting their Chinese oppressors. The Chinese occupation forced the Dalai Lama to flee Tibet for his own safety and set up a government in exile in Dharamsala, India. The Tibetan government continues to run out of Dharamsala to this day. After his escape to India, the Chinese attacked the legacy of the Dalai Lama and banned his image throughout Tibet. With the Dalai Lama gone, the Chinese took complete control of the capital city of Lhasa and imprisoned all who resisted them. Seeing the monks' connection to Tibetan culture as a threat to their new regime, the Chinese began destroying monasteries and imprisoning monks. Paul Deng Gyatso and his mentor, Rigzin Tenpa, were swept up in the wave of Chinese oppression. So when uh, his teacher or his guru was arrested, uh, at that point, uh, his teacher told him that uh, he was actually uh, uh, an Indian from Kunur region who was studying religion in Tibet in the Dripu Monastery. So what happened was, uh, so the Chinese arrested him, they took him and as, as soon as he was arrested and Kishi uh, Pandey Gyasola himself, uh, he went, when he went back to his room, that is when he was also arrested. Paldin was separated from his mentor and imprisoned by the Chinese on false charges for crimes against the Communist Party. In his mind he was thinking that His Holiness was already in India and he's al already working to get uh, an independent Tibet and uh, he felt that it's only a temporary situation that uh, soon he would be out of the prison and uh, he would be back to a free Tibet. Little did he know that he would spend the next 25 years in Chinese prisons and work camps. In those 25 years, he endured unspeakable torture and was constantly subjected to the re-education programs of the Chinese and to interrogations called Tamzings. Tamzing uh, was, uh, was, in, was interrogation basically. Uh, why did you do this? Uh, and who were, your, who were the co-conspirators? And trying to get the details out. And in terms of sheer volume, uh, there used to be more thumping sessions. And that the reason was, now they would try to re-educate them about socialism, but uh, uh, their mind would not change. Re-education uh, sessions that they had was more about denouncing Kuomintang mm -hmm. and about socialism about equality among people, basically about the Chinese history, uh, the socialist version of the history. Mm -hmm. Prisoners were forced to read constantly from Chairman Mao's Little Red Book and were tortured if they resisted communist teachings and subjected to Tamzings. Uh, for a day they would have propaganda which would say denounce the Dalai Lama or denounce the uh, Pinchen Lama or denounce religion or denounce the old thinking way. The Chinese did not understand how deeply rooted Buddhism is in Tibetan culture and how denouncing the Dalai Lama goes against everything that Tibetans believe. You really, after the 7th century, you really can't separate Tibetan history from Tibetan Buddhism. They're, they're pretty much one and the same. Paldin was tortured and kept from practicing Buddhism for 25 years until he was released in 1992. After his release, he secretly made the journey across the Himalayas into Dharamsala, India. Upon arriving in Dharamsala, Paldin was able to tell the Tibetans in exile of the hardships that he had endured at the hands of the Chinese. Paldin was granted an audience with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, a meeting that he describes in his autobiography as his life's ambition. Since his escape from Tibet, 
Halden has been an activist for the Free Tibet Movement and has detailed his experiences in a book called The Autobiography of a Tibetan Monk to tell the world about the injustices occurring in Tibet. His hope that we will, that Tibet will be free and that we will return to Tibet uh, is a hope that he had since he was in prison. Mm -hmm. 